way in our midst is our dear one who turned, who added New Year to her life. <laughs> we turned 29, I should say. <laughs> so we want to pray in Thanksgiving for our dear Mama Rita Henry. Oh. Happy birthday. We also pray for all other intentions each one of us may have. And any other person whose birthday is today is a unique day. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. Oh, oh, oh. 
desires of those who entreat you. Pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads, and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and Thank you. 
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, have no anxiety at all, but in everything. By prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your request known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence in and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Then the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks. 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 Thanks.
What will the owner of the vineyard do to those tenants when he comes? They answered him, He will put those wretched men to a wretched death and leave his vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the proper times. Jesus said to them, did you never read in the scriptures the stone that the builders rejected has become the corner stone? By the Lord has this been done, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to the people that will produce its fruit. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May we be seated. How are you today? We are blessed indeed. Now, is there something that you heard in the first reading and also heard it in the gospel? What is one thing that came two times? The vineyard. The vineyard. The vineyard. The vineyard. And who told the story, the parable, the gospel? Jesus. Jesus. It seems that our Lord um, picks up where the first one, the, you know, the first reading leaves off. Where Isaiah picks up, our Lord picked up, picked it up from there. Now, but the summary of it all is that the Lord wants us to bear good fruit. That's it. So we are like his vineyard. He cultivates us and gives us everything we need to bear good fruit. And what kind of good fruit does he want us to bear? Is it like apples or pomegranates or prunes or strawberries? <laughs> no. <laughs> he wants us to bear good fruits of virtue, virtuous life, to do what is right, to do what is right, what is holy. You know, to love and not to, uh, not to hate. Now, um, you remember that last week we, uh, we dwelt on the son who did his father's will. Mm -hmm. Son who did his father's will. So this week we're going to uh, dwell on what happens if you don't do the father's will. What is the consequence? Is there any consequence when you don't do the will of God? When you don't do what you are supposed to do. When you don't bear the good fruit, what happens? Punishment. That's right. Yeah, you remember that story. <laughs> you remember the story when our Lord was hungry and he saw a big fig tree. Yeah, and then he wanted to, uh, to harvest some fig from that. Did he see any fig there? No. He did not. And he cursed it. He said, may there be no fruit on you again. And he withered from, uh, from root to branch. So the consequences of ignoring the will of our Heavenly Father is enormous. And you know that through the parable of the two sons, which one son said no at first, but afterwards changed his mind and went to work. The Lord used it to show us how dear to his heart it is when someone repents. You know, he holds that a repentant sinner, that he holds a repentant sinner very dear. And that is also the lesson, the message we see in the parable of the prodigal son. Because that young guy did everything that was wrong in the book. But he turned around. He came back to his father. 
So the Lord's heart is always open to someone who turned away from frivolous and sinful ways. It doesn't matter how long the person has been there, but the so far the person turns away from it. He's good by God. So, as we pointed out at the very beginning, there are always unpalatable and everlasting consequences when one refuses to repent and dies in such a state. So, God offers us innumerable means of salvation. He gives us the ladder with which we climb to heaven. And that ladder is the opportunity to do good. He gives us opportunities and graces to grow and become better persons. You don't look behind, you look forward, you push ahead for what lies ahead. So, but then, what happens when we do not, when we ignore the voice of God, summoning us to eternal salvation? What happens when we ignore the beauty, the truth, and the goodness that is beyond our imaginations? Tragic consequences happen. And we see this in two parables, one from Isaiah we read today, and another one from the Gospel according to St. Matthew. The first parable features, the first par parable features a well stated and cultivated vineyard. And the choicest vine was planted in that vineyard. But what did it bear? What did it yield? Sour grapes. Sour grapes. For rotten grapes. How powerful that is. And that uh, sour grape was poisonous. You cannot eat it. It may kill you if you do. So Yahweh did not mean words about the sad, the sad consequences that will follow. Now he said, I will let you know what I'm going to do my, to my vineyard. Take away its edge, give it to grazing, break through its walls, and let it be trampled. Yes, I will make it a ruin. God was really mad. Why was he mad? Why? Because he had invested in it. Yet he did everything, but it did not bear good fruit. Then the second parable is about the tenant who, who is that who maltreated and killed the king's messengers. And the song, they were awful. So the chief priests and elders accurately captured the consequences that awaited those murderers. The Lord asked them, what do you think the owner will do to those killers? What do you think he will do? He said, he will put those wretched men to wretched death and leave the vineyard to others who will give him the produce at the proper time. That is Matthew 21, verse 41. Now, it is important to remember that these parables refer to people. It's not about, about fruits and trees. They refer to people and how they use or fail to use the opportunity for salvation the Lord put, puts at their beck and call. So the first reading clearly said, the vineyard of the Lord is what? Is the house of Israel. It means his people. It's the house of Israel is his people. And then the tenants refer to so the leaders of the people, the chief priests and the elders. Now does it mean that, that we stand up with them, that it doesn't concern us? You know, it refers to the house of Israel and then it refers to the chief priests and the elders. I 
our chief priests, our elders, does it mean we stand our feet? No, not at all. We are all implicated. We are all implicated. We are all in it. The Lord is speaking to each and every one of us. So the Bible describes the iniquities of that time. At that time was 8th century BC. It describes it this way as the time of dishonesty and arrogance. Nobody can tell anybody what to do. Nobody corrects the order. The Lord said, um, those of the time who call evil good. What is evil? They say it is good. What is good? They say it is evil. Who change darkness to light and light into darkness. Who change bitter to sweet and sweet to into bitter. And those are wise in their own eyes. Are they wrong? They are. they are. So sounding very much like our own time. That time sounded much like our own time. The sinners of that period included those who enact unjust laws, who write oppressive decrees, depriving the needy of judgment, robbing people's poor of justice making widows their plunder and offerings their prayer. So sometimes in, in this, in our society, it appears that the mind is right. Yes, you have, you have clout, you have money, you have power, you can do anything, but that's not what the world wants. It appears that the stronger inflicts uh, inflicts harm, hurt on the weaker, but it should not be. In God's eyes, the weakest should be defended and protected. So God always has the prefer preference for the weak in any confrontation. The person who is weaker is the one that you should have pity on. You know, take for instance, in terms of, uh, say, in terms of two persons, the pregnant mother and the baby in the womb. The baby is the weakest because it doesn't have anything to fight back. So that baby's life should be considered important and respected. It should not be attacked because it's defenseless. The same is true in other situations in our life. And that is why you know, the church says abortion is evil. We don't do it. Or we don't support it. Now, those leaders that were being referred to, they were supposed to show good examples by lives of integrity. But the contrary was the case. And the consequences was devastating. The Lord said, the cities are desolate without inhabitants, houses without people, and the land is a desolate waste until the Lord sends the people far away and the great is the desolation, desolation in the midst of the land. And that happened in 732 BC. That part of the world was overrun by another country, Assyria decimated the northern part of Israel. So the supreme consequences of remaining adamant in sin is eternal death and alienation from God. Now, how can we retrace our steps back from ignoring the will of God before it is too late? How can we avoid the mistakes of our ancestors, the Lord tells us, he says, come, come now, let us set things right. Though your sins be like the scarlet, they may become white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, 
they may become white as wool. If you are willing and obey, you shall eat the good things of the land. So the simple thing, the simple way forward is obey the commandments of God. That's it. Stay with it. It's not too far that we cannot understand it. It's simple. So, conclusion. We must ask ourselves this important question. And what is that question? Is this is there any opportunity to ascend higher on the ladder of holiness and likeness to Christ that I am overlooking? Is there any opportunity to do good that I am overlooking? Even when it is hard, the Lord still summons us to choose the good. Truth and Paul. The Lord shows us the way forward. And what he said is this. We find it in the second reading. Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, Think about these things and do them. Amen? Amen. Amen. May we rise and profess our faith. I believe in one God, God, the Father Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all. Justice may create around the world. 
a welcome for the socially and economically disadvantaged. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. That divine love may create for those who have died a welcome into everlasting happiness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord would grant us success in our capital campaign. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those of our community who are in hospitals, nursing homes, or recovering at home, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Unto all our intentions and the silence of our hearts, in thanksgiving to God for all the blessings He has given to us, and for the end to this pandemic, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, creator and giver of life, hear the prayers of your people. Transform us in your love, so that your kingdom may grow in our midst. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Today we have three collections <laughs> Friends of St. Francis and 21st Century Fund, and then I will build my church. May we proceed? <laughs>
through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. For you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us to redeem us, to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we have lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving you thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. to be 
in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring Paul to the fullness of charity together for Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please join in singing our communion hymn, One Bread, One Body. <coughs>
Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacraments which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us see for tomorrow. The announcement, only one. There are sign-up sheets available in the North Bats for adoration on Friday, November the 6th. Mass begins at 10.30 a.m., followed by adoration at 11 a.m. Please join us and sign up for an hour at least to sit and spend some time with our Lord. Just don't know how, but how really can't tell you how it feels, so you just sort of have to come and do it yourself. <laughs> yeah. so, but do, do try and come and spend some time with our Lord in adoration. On November the 6th, you don't have to stay all day. You can stay five minutes, ten minutes, however long, but just take some time out and come spend some time with our Lord. Thank you. Amen. 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 Thank you. That is well said. Um, I wanted to uh, say two things. Number one, to say that our first Friday yesterday was very well attended. Yeah, and I want to uh, thank everybody who participated. It was very fruitful. And the Kusiistas, the men and women to see you, and then the Divine Office Prayer members were represented. And today we have the same amount of success in the food drive that was done. People were here before 6 a.m. Oh. <laughs> and the parking lot was free to the brim. You know, it just was powerful experience seeing that. And then um, I saw a lot of our young people who don't come to church anyway, even when there is no coding. <laughs> but they came. You know, they came. So I think there is something we need to learn about food drive, you know, that we can apply at mass. I don't know what that is. I don't know whether we'll say that each mass will have food drive. <laughs> you know, we give out some food items. Those young people, they will come. They want to give out something to those who need it. So anyway, but it's a, it's a prayer point, something that we can be praying and discern. But the other, uh, the flip side, well, not really the flip side, but something that happened today is that one of us became sick. Yeah, and the ambulance was called, and she was taken to German Town Methodist. That's Kitty. What is the real name of Kitty? Helen Way. Helen, Helen Way. Yeah, let us offer one Helen for Helen that she will be well. Okay. Helen Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Our Lady, Health of the Sea, pray for us. Saint Augustine, pray for us. Now, how many of us received my email? You know, all right. How many don't receive it and don't receive bulletin? How many don't receive the email? Okay. And don't receive the bulletin? Well, you are in a hard place. <laughs> you are beginning to rock at <laughs> Anyway. So I don't know what to do. I'm going to read to you this, but it's long. It's long, but I will I will read it anyway for the benefit of those who don't do email, don't receive my email, and they don't do they don't receive a bulletin in there. So at the end of the class, give me your email. I'll write it and include it. So this is what I want to talk about is a lesson from a thunderbolt preschooler. Thunderbolt, a lesson from a Thunderbolt preschooler. That was an experience. When our St. Augustine school was open, I usually took 
great delight in visiting different classes. One day, I went to visit the pre-Ks. I was surprised that, that they knew me, they recognized me, and they were having lunch. I noticed that one child was not eating a cheeseburger like the rest of the students. He was eating chicken nuggets instead. And I said to the child, why are you not eating a cheeseburger? His response was very intriguing and insightful. He said, cheeseburger makes me mad. <laughs> That's what the child said. Cheeseburger makes me mad. So the lesson, do you begin your day by listening to news headlines that make you mad and anxious? How about beginning it with a quiet and peaceful time for the Lord? You can use the Laudate app that many of us know and pray the rosary. Listen to the scriptural readings and podcasts from Benedictus Moments, or you can pray the Psalms using the divineoffice.org. Best of all, you can attend the Holy Mass. That is heaven on earth. In our diocese, we have the blessing of the church is staying open, unlike in California. So, the, the third homily, make your choice. Begin your day on the banks of calm and untroubled sea of peace by listening and talking to God. Or begin your day neck deep in the tumultuous sea of screaming, yelling, cursing, and profanities by listening to news headlines. One leaves you with lasting peace and the other leaves you with seething anger, panic, and anxieties. I am not saying to not listen to the news, but I do, I do say, please begin your day with God, not with the weight of the ills of the world. Uh, some of us knew this, the World Wide Catholic Channel, the EWTN, is worth discovering, for it gives you not only news from a Catholic perspective, it nourishes your faith and inspires you to do great things for God and man. And this is very important, especially during this time when the election fever and um, political campaigns are much in the air. Amen? Amen. Amen. I think that concludes the homily today. <laughs> <laughs> they will rise. Before the final prayer part, can you say happy birthday to Mrs. Day? That's right. Yeah. <laughs>